Again, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for this Sunday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, meteorologist with National Weather Service, and I'll be hosting today's show again. And uh, again, no watches, warnings, or advisories with high pressure dominating the state. Uh, for the most part, for the next uh, uh, one or two days more, anyway, until the uh, storm system moves into the northwest part of the state on Tuesday. Anyway, looking at the satellite, uh, what's going on today is got a band of clouds dropping southward, high pressure out over the Bering Sea, clockwise flow around that, so north-northwest flow into the interior. Uh, just mid and high level moisture here, no precipitation at all in this band. Now back to the north, another uh, trough brought some areas of light precipitation, mostly around Kaktovik, otherwise just had fog back to the west there. And uh, dry conditions though across all of the Bering Sea and the Gulf of Alaska, this uh, system uh, really not making much headway up toward the central Aleutians like it looked like it possibly could have done a couple of days ago. But there is a uh, rain producing system here over the panhandle. You can see the occluded front right across the uh, southern area there with clouds into the uh, northern part of the southeast coast. They read rain as far north as I believe Cake, Petersburg. Both uh, locations picked up a hundredth of an inch today and really light rain with this, not a big uh, rain and definitely not a big wind producer at all with uh, about two tenths of an inch falling at uh, Net and Ketchikan. Otherwise, by comparison, Klawak had roughly five hundredths of an inch. And you can see the main low center slowly drifting northward toward the Queen Charlotte's and this front already starting to weaken. Also to the north, uh, skies were mostly sunny and that allowed temperatures to rise to uh, near 70 in some locations. Uh, Gustavus had 70 degrees today and up toward Haines 68, 68 over at Yakutat, even warmer conditions over at Valdez. Northeast winds again kicked up to about 30 miles an hour this afternoon and that allowed temperature or helped temp push the temperature up to 72 degrees with that downsloping effect. Uh, Seward, lighter winds, but uh, they also reached 72 this afternoon. Uh, not bad for the ninth day of September and then temperatures near 70 in the Susitna Valley. Uh, mostly around Big Lake was near 70 and also that uh, near 70 degree temperatures recorded over the Kenai Peninsula. A little cooler with the cloudiness back up to the north there but uh, very weak trough out here crossing the top of that uh, Bering Sea High with the flow again all the moisture either staying to the south way out to the west but pretty good moisture flow there into Russia and every now and then a piece of that breaks off and comes eastward in that uh, flow. So a little bit of uh, rain, fog, dri or drizzle and fog and clouds and lower flying conditions with this very weak system here. Northern Bering Sea up toward uh, St. Lawrence Island and Bering Strait uh, areas of fog. Chuck C. C. there. Also over the Aleutians uh, down to half mile at Chimia. Otherwise precipitation of this front well to the south. Front barely getting on the map and uh, a little bit of possible drizzle and fog over at uh, the Eastern Aleutians, as well as uh, the Pribilof Islands. Otherwise, a sunny day here for Kodiak. Northwest flow continues. Uh, winds gust up to about 30 miles an hour down on the southern part of the island out of the northwest over at Akiak, but um, less wind at Palmer than what you saw yesterday. And it looks like mostly sunny over the Copper River Basin. For tonight, that system actually, the front starts to slide eastward and the precipitation begins to retreat back to the southeast and uh, but it'll linger over the southern areas tonight. Occasional light rain there, but ending uh, just to the north. Skies will gradually clear. Also from north to south, high pressure in over the interior at the surface, light winds and uh, kind of chilly temperatures. Again, some areas seeing some uh, dropping below the frost point tonight in the interior. And eastern Arctic coast, look for decreasing. Still a risk of some moisture there throughout the night tonight, but um, it will be quite light. Fog back to the west, fog through the Bering Strait from the Chukchi Sea, and fog here uh, over the Bering Sea, really some drizzle possible. That could break out anywhere over the Bering Sea, 
and uh, looks like fog in toward Bristol Bay, but staying VFR, Togiak, Dillingham, King Salmon, south side of the Alaska Peninsula, VFR, Kodiak, VFR. Maybe a few breaks around the Fox Islands, but this uh, very weak band of moisture here could produce some uh, drizzle and fog uh, for areas over toward about Atka. Otherwise, uh, most of these weak troughs are well to the north. They're crossing Russia and heading up to the northeast. And then for tomorrow, that same pattern, you see one other trough here coming into the Bering Strait with the same type of weather down towards St. Lawrence Island. No change over the Bering Sea. This system down here pressing up a little bit farther to the north, just kind of oscillating around there from one day to the next. But staying south of the Aleutians, could see a little bit of moisture here over the central areas, but the main rain band will remain down to the south. Sunshine, interior Alaska from the Brooks Range, again, down to the south. Maybe a little warmer up here in the interior with less cloudiness tomorrow. So could see uh, warmer temperatures due to that, and otherwise a day much like today for southern Alaska, 60 to 70 degrees for the highs, and more sunshine farther south in the pan there, those showers out of the area and into Canada, uh, at least by midday for the extreme southern areas. But that uh, upper level system persists, and on, on Tuesday, <clears throat> excuse me, You'll see still a risk of some shower activity there with the uh, main system still off to the east, but circulating back and keeping a chance of a shower or two around mainly Hyder and Stewart, otherwise variably cloudy for the remainder of the southern areas there. We could see a few breaks in the overcast, but just up to the north though, another sunny day for the northern panhandle. Sunshine once again, Kodiak with that light northwest flow into the southwest interior. This cloudiness here in the Cuscombe Valley due to this warm front back to the northwest there, but the precipitation maybe from the Nolato Hills, very light there, but increases as you head up to the north. And this uh, system coming in is a result of the upper high pressure area dropping southward and southeastward and redeveloping farther to the south. And that's going to allow pretty good southwest flow into the northwest part of the state for some rain and increasing wind. On Tuesday, that'll continue into Wednesday. Actually, it'll turn westerly. And then later in the week, we'll have a northwest flow again through the interior part of the state. Otherwise, uh, no change for the southern Bering Sea. The Aleutians coming a little more under the effect of this uh, system to the south. It looks like even on Tuesday, rainfall stays to the south of Adak and Atka, but it will result in an increase in the uh, easterly winds. And for temperatures, lows tonight, 25 to 30 here for the eastern interior areas, upper 20s eastern Arctic coast, mid 30s central coast, mid to upper 40s back to the west, mid 40s Yukon Cusquam Delta, Seward Peninsula, upper 40s St. Lawrence Island, mid 40s Pervilofs, mid to upper 40s for the Aleutians, as well as the southeast coast, 28 to 33 for the Copper River Basin, 35 to 42 for south central Alaska. And then the highs, mid 60s, Kodiak Island, 74 in the Susitna Valley, Tomorrow forecast, uh, Talkeetna, a big lake, uh, Wasilla, near 70. Uh, well, actually, 70s could extend all the way down the Kenai Peninsula. 65 to 70 Copper River Basin, and back 65 to lower 70s now over in the northern panhandle. And again, milder, but into the uh, lower 60s, at least through the central interior. Mid-30s, eastern Arctic coast, to up lower 50s on the west side, and mid-50s for the Aleutians. High and lows the following morning, again, 25 to 30 here over the eastern interior into the lower 30s. Milder back to the west with more cloudiness, uh, mid-40s there, mid to upper 40s for the panhandle. Upper 40s, Alaska Peninsula, lower 50s, 51, Adak and Atka. Highs on Tuesday, 65 to 73 here for south central Alaska, Kenai Peninsula, mid to upper 60s, Bristol Bay. Mid-60s in the uh, Kuskokum Valley there for Nikolai and McGrath, maybe sleep mute, but gradually falling into the upper 50s down over the deltas. Panhandle, very nice day. Sunshine, especially central and northern areas, 65 to 70 there. Upper 30s, eastern Arctic coast to mid 50s on the western coast. The Brooks Range, upper 40s to lower 50s. While we're looking at, uh, again, mid 50s there around the eastern border. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Here's a uh, flying weather graphic for Monday morning showing about the same pattern we've seen here for a couple of days with the IFR out over the Bering Sea, now over the eastern Bering, uh, on through the Strait. Looks like catching a good portion of the northwest coast, all the Arctic coast, into the central eastern north slope. Brooks Range southward, Bristol Bay, Kodiak Island in the Gulf, and the Panhandle, all VFR, 
starting the day out Monday. And for the afternoon, not much change. Uh, band IFR here holding uh, pretty much, uh, well, retreating a little bit off the Arctic coast there, but hanging tough on the east side. And then southward through the Bering Strait, all the way down now to the north side of the Alaska Peninsula. And back across the Pribilos, nothing but VFR and sunshine over the interior in the Panhandle. And uh, IFR are marginal out over the Aleutians in southern Bering. Uh, Tuesday morning, that becomes solid IFR out here for the Aleutians, all the way up again through the Bering Strait. Now, uh, kind of uh, overwhelming the Seward Peninsula there, and back into the no attack valley now, not just along the northwest coast, marginal on the western Arctic coast, east side as well, maybe some breaks along the way. Uh, VFR for the most part holding here through the interior. Looks like some moisture showing up over the eastern Alaska range, maybe the Wrangell Mountains, but same VFR for the Panhandle. Tuesday afternoon, Whatever that was, burns away. And VFR here for much in the interior, all the way down across southeast coast, Dixon entrance. Bristol Bay still in the VFR zone, but uh, as a high pressure ridge retreats and breaks, shifts eastward a little bit, that's gonna allow this uh, moisture to make its way inland. And we see marginal VFR all the way, almost to the Koyukuk Valley, southern slopes of the Central Brooks Range. IFR off the western Arctic coast and pretty well entrenched over the central Bering Sea on down across much of the Aleutians. Passes Anatovic and Adigan tomorrow. Really good VFR once again. And same thing, Lake Clark Merrill, rainy ceiling visibilities unlimited. Same forecast for Wendy, Isabel, and Mintasta. All VFR for the day tomorrow. And for Tanita, looking good. VFR there as well. And also probably on Tuesday as well for both Tanita and Portage, uh, VFR. In fact, all the passes are VFR. Chilkoon White, no surprise, VFR. And for the freezing levels, big upper level ridge out here over the Bering Sea, 12,000 feet all the way up into the Chukchi Sea there. And then uh, kind of a cooler air, got this northerly jet, as we saw in the uh, jet stream, kind of uh, coming back to the west a little bit. So that's driving this uh, chillier air down and creating that gradient there along the eastern Arctic coast and also up over the northeast interior, but generally, uh, 10 to 12,000 feet here over much of Alaska and about 8,000 feet for the Panhandle on down across the uh, 40 mile country, Eastern Copper River Basin. As far as uh, icing goes, the only area, maybe some very isolated moderate above about 7,000 feet here, the band of moisture again associated with that uh, western side of that upper trough that's digging in the Mackenzie River Delta Northwest Territories. And that's about it icing wise here around the state tomorrow. That is it, if it happens at all, even up there. And for the jet stream, upper level high, now actually starting to build eastward here into the interior. So the southwest jet in this position tomorrow will be a little farther to the east and drive that moisture a little farther in on Tuesday. Otherwise for tomorrow, we've got uh, offshore flow here about 60, 70 knots, stronger branch coming in uh, to the Northwest Territories there. Upper level low off the Southeast coast there, but uh, really pushing the jet well to the south and 9,000 feet uh, north to northeast, 10 to 20 at the most through uh, mainland Alaska here. Uh, a little breezier here in the eastern areas uh, from the Brooks Range, 20 knots. Could see 30 knot northwesterlies along the eastern Beaufort Sea coast, otherwise 15 from the southwest. Really light winds under the ridge here out over the Bering Sea with, uh, you can see 5 to 15 across the western interior areas and just five knots around the Pribilofs and five to 10 for the Alaska Peninsula. Light winds 10 to 15, Kodiak Island from the north, north northwest. Even the Aleutians, you may see 20 knot winds there west of Adak, otherwise 5 to 10. And the stronger winds just to the south there, but staying to the south at least through tomorrow. And also we've got fairly light winds here for the southeast coast, even with that low center there east of the Queen Charlotte's. Only 10 to maybe 20 knots at the most. 3,000 feet, about the same pattern here, but winds lighter, mostly just 10 knots now for the Panhandle. Five knots for the Gulf of Alaska to Kodiak, up in across the Copper River Basin, and uh, kind of a zone right through here, 10 to 15, maybe 20 along the Alaska Range, otherwise either side of that and to the north, five to 10. Again, at the most turbulence, none, no moderate expected at all.
We have cleaned over 1,500 miles of shoreline now. Basically, it comes down to just human muscle. I mean, we use chainsaws and knives. We find stuff from like Russia and China and Korea, Vietnam, Malaysia. It really doesn't matter where it comes from. We all just have to clean it up. Our goal right now in the next 10 or 11 days before the end of this year is just to how much we, we can collect before we get to remove it. What you see on the beach is a fraction of what's out there. You can pretty much break it down into three or four things. Uh, Water bottles, a lot of water bottles, styrofoam, fishing nets, fishing buoys. And that's 99% of what you find on the beach. Basically, just go along with chainsaws and muscle and uh, get the garbage, put it in sacks, and then from there, we haul it up above the log jam so it's out of any heavy surf or winter storms if it's gonna stay there for the year and uh, put it in super sacks. So yeah, we just progressively work down the coast just day in and day out. We have uh, like daily goals for ourselves that like if we're working at a pretty good rate, we'd like to keep on pace with about like, I don't know, about 20, 20 to 25 super sacks a day. So this is pile 102, and in this pile right now, we have two super sacks and one set of buoys. June 23rd here, this is what we've done today. Uh, we're up to 25 super sacks on the day, and I think for now we'll call it and just keep cleaning until tomorrow. My name is Hannah, and I represent a uh, organization in Japan called Japan Environmental Action Network. With over what 20 people working together to clean up the beach this is amazing like we all need to work together to you know clean up the beach as much as possible so like every single time i go back to japan you know i go i, I talk to the fishermen and the fishermen's like it's a joke but they're like if you find any buoy with my logo you gotta bring it back and you know like always looking out for that stuff The crew's awesome. I mean, we're all skiers or snowboarders, and we're all friends. I mean, we're all good friends. My dad started it. He's the man behind the desk. He makes the ball roll, for sure. He works hard. He, uh, he doesn't give up easy, which is good. This stuff is uplifted quite a ways during an earthquake. I think my bag's about full already. Yeah. I'm gonna take a quick look back in here. Somebody else is back here. The thing about marine debris is it's kind of a hidden problem. Unless you're out there, especially on these remote beaches that are so heavily impacted, people don't see it. I remember probably a good 20 years ago, I, I was out on the outside of Montego Island and flew out there. And I was just utterly astounded by all the garbage out there. You walk out there and you wade through this stuff and you go, this isn't right. This shouldn't happen. I think a lot of it's just awareness. I mean, I've been boating out here for a long time and I wasn't even aware of how extensive the marine debris problem is out here. But uh, it's, a, it's a consumer world out there for sure. I mean, I don't know where people's values are, I guess, but mine is you got to kind of have a little bit of respect for the environment and uh, considering we live in it, especially in Alaska. I mean, a lot of people, 
like the outdoors and like to be part of the outdoors. That's why they live here, and it's uh, they don't necessarily want to see it trashed. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Uh, sea ice analysis. Uh, big area of multi-year heavier ice here persisting just off the uh, eastern Beaufort Sea coast, but thinning out a little bit here uh, from what it was several days ago, but still in close uh, from Prudhoe Bay eastward in close toward the coast. But you can see thinning out a little bit from what it was actually yesterday, but areas of extending back to the northwest. Not no big changes uh, coming up in the next four or five days. Coastal water forecasts north, 20 knots for all of the southeast coast here on the outer coastline. Six to seven foot seas, northwest 10 for Clarence Strait, 20 knots out of the northwest for Stevens Passage. And uh, small craft advisories, north 25, northern Lynn Canal again tomorrow. Much like you had today, guys have peak gusts at uh, 36 miles an hour, Elder Rock today. Now probably happen again tomorrow. And then for Tuesday, it looks like no change. It'll probably happen tomorrow and Tuesday as well with uh, small craft advisories, Lynn Canal, North 20, Stevens Passage, Northwest 15, Southern inside waters, as well as the South Coast here, North Coast, North at 15 knots with five foot seas. And for uh, Gulf of Alaska, North Gulf Coast, no heavy uh, wind at all in the forecast. Variable 10, for the North Gulf Coast, seas four feet, light northerlies for Prince William Sound or variable at 10. Northwest 15, Kamishak Bay and the Barrens, North 15, Southern Cook Inlet, about 10 knots out of the north for the areas north of the Forelands with two foot seas. And Tuesday, north winds at 10 for all of Cook Inlet, Northwest 15, Kamishak Bay, picking up to 20 knots for the Barren Islands out of the northwest. Otherwise, uh, north to northeast here at 10, staying light here over the North Gulf Coast with four foot seas. Light north winds for Prince William Sound. <clears throat> Kodiak Island, northwest 15 tomorrow. And the Alaska Peninsula, west northwest 15 knots. These three to four feet, even lighter winds in store for Bristol Bay out of the northwest at 10 knots with slight seas. And then those pick up uh, from uh, west to 15, but the seas hanging at about two feet. South winds at 10 on the north side of the peninsula, Pacific side west 15. Castle Cape to Sitkanak and up the east side of Kodiak there. West winds at 20 knots for Tuesday with uh, five foot seas and west 15 for Shalikoff Strait, seas at three feet. Fox Islands tomorrow on Alaska Island, east at about 10 and then Unmak Island, 15 to 20 knots out of the east with those seas six to nine feet. 20 to 25 knot winds for Adak and Atka. Again, just on the outer edge of that system down to the south. So that's going to nudge the winds up a little bit there and extend that 25 knot wind out to about Amchitka and then back down to 15 for the western zone. And then you get a, uh, more under the influence of that system on Tuesday, obviously, here with minimum gales in the forecast just south of Adak and Atka. 
30 knots on the north side. Small crowd advisories over toward Unmac Island, Unalaska Island, east 15 to 20. And seas here, as you can see, building up uh, 14 to 16 feet on the Pacific side of the central Aleutians. 30 knot winds now out to possibly Kiska Island with the small craft advisories, otherwise east 20. Southwest coast, north 10 to 15, two, two, two to two foot seas. And northwest 15 for the Pribilofs with three foot seas. West 15, St. Matthew Island, St. Lawrence Island, southerlies at 10 two-foot seas, and uh, light easterlies there for Norton Sound. Outlook for Tuesday, southwest 20 for St. Lawrence Island, diminishes to about 10 in the Sound, northwest 10 to 15 along the southwest coast, light northerlies for the Pribilofs, and St. Matthew Island south at about 20 knots with five-foot seas. And then for the uh, Beaufort Sea coast on the east side, east-northeast 10 to 15, southeast 15, central coast continues to become uh, back around to Revere to south at 15 knots there for the western coast all the way down to the Bering Strait with three foot seas. And uh, increase in the winds definitely on Tuesday. Small craft advisories now all of the Arctic coast, uh, east side or the eastern Beaufort Sea coast east of 25, southeast 25, south 25, and then southwest 25 of the Chukchi Sea. And for tonight, high pressure, light winds, mostly clear skies over the interior. Bering Sea cloudiness here in the uh, west and maybe some fog and drizzle around St. Matthew Island, possibly Nunavak Island, fog for the Pribilofs under high pressure, light winds, light easterly breeze, maybe some drizzle, fog in areas there of the Aleutians. Otherwise, very light precipitation trending to end there for the eastern Beaufort Sea coast and it wasn't much to begin with anyway. And also rainfall slowly ending and diminishing sliding off to the southeast, taking the showers with it, but lingering clouds for the southern panhandle in the afternoon. Sunshine, 60s to mid 70s to sit in the valley and about the same on Tuesday with rain in the northwest. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.